Hey everybody, um, welcome once again to Occultus Anonymous. Um, as we have been doing for the past three sessions, he was on a bit of a break to create more um, dangerous and compelling content for us for our usual Major Awakening games. So we are running a series of mini-series <coughs> uh, featuring other game systems and different uh, storytellers and that kind of thing. So we're currently in the middle of a Star Trek Adventures um, arc uh, based on the Star Trek Adventures book by Modiphius. Um, and I lost my script. There we are. Uh, we are brought to you, uh, as always, by Roll20 and um, viewers like you, specifically Shane, James, Ryan, Chepsara, Chris, Thomas, Riafio, Emil, Clara, Puppeteer, Flug, Harry, Drew Nose, um, Mozart D minor, other guy, Michael, Melissa, George, Crazy Man 1772, Cat Feathers, Blue Shirt, Jenny, John, Funzu Suru Ali, uh, Taryn, Josh, Secret FFL, Sean, Chandra, uh, Bernie, Zoltan, Buck, Eugenics in Space. Thanks, Griffin. Um, Alsrit, John, Jules, Best Boy, Adele, Al, Alexander, Kloss, uh, Long Live the Queen, Milo V3, Ms. Grumpy, Moku, Noba, Porter, and Vortex Falcon 00. Thank you very much for, for your ongoing support. Um, the funds we raise uh, through Patreon help pay for new art and equipment replacement and that kind of stuff, so I really appreciate it. Uh, check. Rules review. The Modifius system is uh, uses D20s, but low numbers are good. Ones are like a natural 20, and 20s are like a critical fail. Um, so when you're watching the rules go by on the screen, the low numbers are always better. They don't even see those um, numbers, Craig. Oh, they don't? No, oh, right. It's only, yeah. <laughs> they just see the successes. Okay. Um, Star Trek is an intellectual property that it contains a vast amount of lore and detail. Um, and that verisimilitude is very compelling and there's certainly a lot of ways one might be able to use that, but that's not what we're here about. We're not too concerned about the details of who did what when or what the that crew complement was of this particular ship. Um, we're using that into the Shwapi as the painting canvas with which we're painting a word picture for your entertainment. Um, when we last looked our story, the crew found themselves on a strange planet populated by giant Amazon women. They were placed as members of society who, through testing and trials, select specimens that are used to elevate the lineage of the queens. The whole society is run behind the scenes by um, a mysterious entity called only the Caretaker. Um, the crew are not sure how they got here, but they managed to shake off the indoctrination and are trying to get back to their ship. Most of the crew is still indoctrinated, but the senior staff, Captain First Officer, Science Officer, Medical Officer, Wing Commander, and Chief Engineer are free and working behind the scenes. They're not prisoners. Um, they are considered trusted members of society. Or they were until last week. Uh, recently, the crew has poked a little at the leadership of these people, the Queens. Um, and their poking has led to some questioning of things that the Queens had just accepted without thought. Uh, in one particularly dramatic event, this was very traumatic for the Queen involved. who was a lover of the arts, but had never composed anything on their own. Had never even thought that that was something that one could do. Um, so the idea that one of the crew composed a poem on the fly just right there in front of her was mind-blowing to say the least. Um, unfortunately, this caused uh, a bit of an altercation with some androids. Um, Captain Chisor and the Queen Ayans uh, are now fugitives uh, traveling on foot throughout the city streets trying to evade the censors of the caretaker. Um, the Androids that were used were the same model as the ones that were working in the medical facility with Dr. Hudson. They do not seem to have a lot of combat protocols programmed into them, so they were fairly easy to defeat. They do have um, magic wands. Or, but they do have magic ray gun wands, yes, uh, that only do non-lethal damage. Uh, Commander Kidneyel, seeking potential reinforcements and possibly trying to foment the rebellion, um, has obtained the loyalty of some indoctrinated Nausicans. Um, and was looking to get them out of the detention center. Uh, he's going to need the help of Servitors 251 and 264 in order to do that. Uh, but he's also had his eye on the next phase. Sooner or later, the crew is going to need to get off this planet and get back to their ship. 
So uh, on his shopping list of things to do is find a way off the planet. Uh, Dr. Hudson has had their duties in the medical center expanded, including helping with the preparation of the next generation of queens, all based on modified DNA, DNA of an ancient queen known as Mother Athena. His exposure to the mass technology has been a rare treat, and he seems pretty settled into his role right now, um, just soaking up everything he can um, like a sponge. Um, for all their technology and generations of eugenics bent on improving the queens, you have a lot of evidence that there is the society is sick. There's been no signs of growth or progress in at least a hundred years. And based on the reactions of the queens to certain questions, it seems the queens themselves may have been indoctrinated similar to the candidates that show up randomly on the planet and are thrown into the trials. Um, and that's where we left off, unless I missed anything. Shavor okay. getting into the arena. Yes, uh, Shavor, who had... Uh, before she was aware of what happened, there was also kind of during the memory wipe, had uh, elevated, found herself selected by one of the queens to be a personal assistant. Um, and then based on a conversation with that queen who was so um, uh, fond of how she was able to handle herself, she felt it was wrong for her to have taken her out of the trials, that she should be contributing to the elevation of the queens and making them all stronger for it. So put her back into the trials. So now there's three of you attempting to manipulate the outcome of the trials to um, get the outcome that you're looking for. And I think that's everything. So if there's nothing else, we can roll our intro. Space, the final frontier. These are the brave adventures of the Starship Curie, whose three-year mission is to explore new worlds, to seek out new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. All right. Hey, uh, everybody. Oh. Dog going nuts. There must have been a leaf blowing across the lawn or something. Um, the camera opens up with um, Villa, uh, Lieutenant Shavor, in the quarters of her queen. Um, after a successful match in it? the arena. What's that? Shavor? Did I say Shavor? Oh, I'm sorry. Zakolm. Mm, squirrel on traffic in my head. Um, yeah. So after a successful boat, you had some private time um, with the queen and uh, uh, followed up on some of the poking and prodding that you had done earlier. Um, and she has uh, invited you back to her quarters. Well, I say invited. The queens don't really invite people. They just say you'll okay. come with me sort of thing. Um, and it's just assumed that you will come. Um, but that's kind of what you wanted to have happen anyway. Um, so you're back in her um, personal quarters. Um, and she's been a lot more furtive. The queens are, are generally speaking, very bold and out there. And they're in charge and everyone knows it, including them. So they're not usually furtive or secretive or stealthy. But she's been very furtive with you, looking around to make sure no one else is paying attention. She's been very aware of the sensors of the caretaker in various places. So you get back to her quarters and um, um, I'm just going to give this to you because it's so out of character. There's She's obviously tampered with some of the sensors in her chambers. Okay. So yeah, like I was going to be eyes up looking to get a spot on yeah. all the cameras. Some of them have been so you, messed with. Yeah. So definitely, yeah, you walk in, you look around and you see that uh, several of them have, have been uh, messed with. Some of them have been, like just have like a uh, um, images placed in front of them. Um, you can rearrange the furniture just to cover it. Yeah, um, or actually just put up a picture of what the room would look like to the camera. Oh, nice. Um, uh, uh, and, and that kind of it's definitely been some steps to blind the sensors in the room. Um, and she's in a bit of an agitated state. She walks in and she's. Um, heads to the table and pulls out a chair as if she's going to sit down and then turns and continues pacing. And then she turns to you and she says, I've done some digging on where you all come from. And I'm blocked at every turn. Is this a conversation we should be having? I need to know some information and you are in a position to provide it. I'm just going to nod 
instead of like saying it out loud because I feel like they're still listening even if they can't see us. Oh, we should be fine here if you're worried about the sensors. Okay. The reason I tampered with the sensors in this room is that all of my inquiries are blocked. It's not that it doesn't produce any information, it's that I'm not permitted to see it. Caretaker. That was my first assumption. I looked into that as well. And oh. that was the response I found. Because I was curious. That was the first time I saw the name of the caretaker. Before you opened my eyes, we had always assumed that the candidates arrived here were volunteers. They entered our society quite willing um, and most contributed um, in their own way um, and were faithful and dutiful servants and valued members of our society. But I've, based on your questions, I've been led down a path of questioning all of that. Is it, need, go ahead. Is it safe to speak freely? It's safe to speak freely. I can tell you some of the answers to these questions. I've interviewed a few, but your responses and actions set you apart somehow. I want to know more about you. Who you are, where you're from, what you remember of your life before you got here. I remember everything. I need you to be a little more specific. Most of the candidates that arrived here remember that they had families, they remembered that they had a life before, that they lived somewhere else. But then they came here. I know that... Still not sure how we were brought here. There was a distress beacon that we took onto our ship. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up here. Which implies this was not consensual. No. There was so some you... level of mental brainwashing control put in as well. Because I do not protocols. Yes. I do not remember anything until I actually woke up. So you didn't come from a planet, you were on a ship? Yes. What type of ship was this? I'll describe the, the best type of ship. <laughs> the um and she's looking Star more for ship. and she's yeah. more looking for the nature of like was it a warship or an exploration ship or a trade ship is sort of what she's yeah, getting an, at. An exploratory vessel. I was a uh, am the chief science officer on board. How do you remember this? I got shocked. <laughs> and apparently that was what was needed to fix my brain. I don't know if it works for everyone. The weapons in the arena. We've been using those weapons for a long time. No one else has ever had this happen. I don't know what's different, but it... That's what did it. Never had a trill before either. Ding ding. Um... No one else I've spoken to recalls anything before their arrival in any kind of detail. They don't remember what they were doing before. You're the first one I've spoken to that has a clear memory of being somewhere else on a ship doing something different. And then there's a blank space and then arriving here. Are 
all of the candidates have they all had the same experience that you have had? I can't speak for all. There are people here who are species that my people have never encountered. I don't know where everyone came from. I can only speak for my crew. Well, there are others from your crew here as well. Yes. As far as I can tell, all? I haven't interacted with all of them. But you've seen many of them here? Yes. And they're all still indoctrinated? Most of them, I assume. Most of them. There's some that aren't? Yes. Um, I was woken up intentionally by another who was... I, I don't know. I don't know how they found out that this works, but... He stops pacing at this point and um, consciously takes a seat. Um, having clocked your hesitation, um, she takes a moment just to meet your eyes for that connection as she says... Thank you for trusting me with that. If there are more of your companions awake, then I assume you were trying to get back to what you were doing before. As much as I believe in the goals of our society, taking people against their will and forcing them to participate is not something that I agree with on a moral level. The ancients, one of their guiding principles was governed by consensus and the rights of individuals to freedom. These are some of their highest principles that they espoused, and we adopted that to follow in their footsteps. But everything about what has been happening here seems wrong and counter to what the ancients would have done. I only seek to understand. You have nothing to fear in sharing with me. Although I understand there are other factors that may cause you to hold your counsel. Yeah, and then I'm just going to look around at the covered up sensors. We want to get back to our ship, but we don't even know where we are or where our ship is. And for our part, we are aware that there are other planets beyond ours, but we've never seen them, never journeyed there. That is, I guess, to be expected, but extraordinary with the technology you have here. This dwarfs everything we've managed to build, and we have starships that regularly go out exploring space. Sometimes we go as fast as warp four. I think I need to consult my queen. You have a queen. I do. I answer to Maonia. Um, she holds a seat of Athena. Her wisdom and experience far exceeds mine. I would advise caution. I don't... Not to cast aspersions on the other queens. I'm aware that something is not right. I'm, I'm worried about what might come of poking around too visibly. But I also know what our queens believe. You just posing a question was enough to make me wonder. And I think if I do the same thing to Aeonia, that push us to just continue 
we are curious and we are intelligent and we are bred to be that way that we didn't that these things didn't occur to us is wrong on many levels I do worry that you all have also been mentally controlled indoctrinated and she glances at the sensors and says I have the same concern I would like Myonia to meet you If you're willing. Of course. All right. Um, she rises from the table and moves to her computer station and uh, punches in um, some commands, and you hear uh, what's clear to you an error tone. And she looks confused for a moment and does it again, and you get the same error tone. And she looks up and you says, The communication system is down. It's never been down. <laughs> and we fade white. I think I know how to do um, that now in OBS. <laughs> We're in the, the camera opens up in the medical center. Um, and servitors 251 and 264 are with Dr. Hudson. And they're quite excited. The time for this uh, session of trials is coming to a close, which means a new generation of queens will be born. Um, and and they're very excited about this. Um, so they're, they are in many ways, they're um, emotionless when their programming is engaged. When they're doing one of the functions that they've designed for, they're very methodical. Um, but outside of that, they do display occasional emotional responses to things like anticipation and joy and ex um, experiences like that. Um, so when they're not immediately involved in a task, they are clearly um, displaying excitement about what's to come. Um, they are really looking forward to this new generation of queens being born in a, a very like maternal and paternal in, um, sort of way. That they're going to be, you know, um, raising a new generation, and they're really excited to the, look for the potential. The next generation. The next generation. Yes, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got today. Kirk is medicated, just to remind everybody. Give him a second. Um, so it's striking when one of them sort of stops what they're doing and just sort of stares blankly at a terminal where there's um, some words sort of flashing. Um, and Sir D264 says, Oh, no, 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 no. And Surge 251 comes over and says, you know, casually, like, what's going on? And then looks at the screen and then her face goes blank. Um, and they look at each other. I, I, I thought everything was going well. What's um, wrong? And the two of them sort of have a bit of a freak out, but you, you ask them. What's wrong? Um... Surya 251 seems kind of overwhelmed and isn't able to respond. 264 is overwhelmed and not able to respond. So Surya 251 looks to you and says, That's the uh, um, um, Apanaparafi protocol. This hasn't been done in a long time. How, how did everything go so wrong so quickly? What, what protocol? The process that we follow to elevate the queens occasionally um, goes wrong. Um, and the caretaker has a protocol to reset um, the development. We're, we're being told we need to prepare for that. And then Surgery 264 so no, I, I can't I can't do that again. And search two five one trying to comfort and said Well, we're only told to prepare. It's not it hasn't come to it yet. But he's still I, I, I can't do that again. Um and they're kind of stuck in a a mental loop there. They've been given instructions 
that they really don't want to to do. Um, but Servitor 251 is sort of methodically, as she's trying to calm down Servitor 264, is methodically starting to get some stuff ready, setting aside equipment and things like that. Um, they're they're still there and they're aware of your presence, but they, it, feel, it feels like they have bigger things on their mind. Um... Maybe like a presence science to try and like draw them into what's what the protocol is, what's happening, why it might be ordered, that sort of thing. Sure. Um, presence science to fact finding. Sure, that works. Yeah. Presence to get his focus, and then science right. to, to try and engage his programming. Uh, composure, because this seems bad. Um, yes, I would say composure would apply. The uh, emotional detachment would help in this case that your composure provides you. Right. Oh no. Um, so you try and ask him what's going on and he kind of looks at you with like horror on his face and he just says, I, I can't do that again. And then turns and runs out of the night center. Oh. Uh, the female android um, sort of comes over to you and watches him leave. And she says the... We were the ones who started this iteration. Where we brought the first new queens into this world. He, we have grown very attached to them. Hmm. And so this protocol is to... We have a chance to save them. If we can get them to agree to indoctrination, re-education, we can still save them. I think that's where we have to focus our efforts now is convincing them that that's the best path. Um, and she sort of looks out the door where um, the male servitor is gone and then looks to you and will, you. will you help me? I don't think I can do this alone. Will I help you try to prevent this protocol? Yeah, uh, help me convince the queens to submit to re-education. What is, what, that does not sound good. What does that entail? It's um, when new candidates arrive, they go through a, an education process to prepare them to function as members of the society. Right. It gives them everything they're going to know to operate um, and the protocols and the languages and um, on everyone. All the candidates go through this, but on occasion, we have applied that to the queens as well. If I can convince them to go through that again, we might be able to save them. But if that doesn't work, the caretaker is going to do a reset. What does a reset entail? Um, give me another presence insight in this case. Or no, I'll go for prison science. Or actually, in your case, because you have, I was going to say con, or command, um, you can use your med medicine instead, uh, if you because uh -huh. you have that power of command kind of thing. Inside manner or something. There we go. Doctor's orders. Okay. 
Uh, so with the previous computation, yeah, you can bank a momentum if you wish, or use it on obtain information. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll bank a momentum. Okay. Move that over there. Um, and just to refocus my context, because I have a squirrel in traffic in my head. Mm -hmm. What was your question? Um, what was the statement you made? What does uh, right. reset entail? The caretaker runs all of the infrastructure. If the caretaker needs to a reset, he just shuts everything down and lets nature take its course. There'll be no food production, no water purification, no power. Mm -hmm. Genocide. She winces when you say that word. It, 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 if uh, a cycle becomes too flawed, the caretaker does a reset in order to start with a clean slate. We were activated at the end of the last cycle. We were new. We didn't know what was happening. We weren't um, attached to any of the individuals that um, starved. In the absence of power, we were just doing the cleanup. But when you're selected to give rise to the next cycle, we were like their parents. And in the generation since, we've seen the fruits of our labor grow and mature and accomplish great things. If the caretaker is asking for a reset, things must have somehow gone terribly wrong, but... Yeah, you know, might have an insight into that. And she sort of looks up to you, hopefully. Uh, it's the recent batch, not of the queens, but of candidates like myself. Doc Hudson is going to oh. sell us out. Um, she says, I don't understand. Do I not seem different than others that have been in your care? Well, yes, um, much more intelligent than you because um, I have the faculties that belong to me. Because I am not indoctrinated to be part of this society. Um, and he draws his phaser. Did you get a hold of a phaser? Oh, no, we don't have our stuff. Never mind. All right. I was trying to be cool, man. Yeah, it would have been the doc going badass moment. I, I am totally on board for the badass moment. But, I mean, but, you could but definitely like, the laser scalpel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, can we say, yeah. ooh, how about, how about this idea? How about this idea? Considering that we've seen the servitors wield their non lethal phaser equivalents, perhaps in the gear they were assembling for the reset, there is one on the table and Dr. Hudson can grab it. It would be very easy for you to pick up a laser scalpel, for yeah, example. Yeah, a scalpel or something. There's and some, there's something to mi like some sort of lab mm. tool that could be menacing enough. Right. Um, so you uh, pull out a, a laser scalpel and brandish it as a weapon, and she looks shocked and, and horrified. Like, what? What do you? What's what? What's going on? I, My crew I was kidnapped and taken hostage, their memories erased, and I have helped you in these endeavors to try and get any bit of information I can on how to get us off this godforsaken rock. So she winces with every phrase of that sentence. Yeah, good. Um, He's trying to hurt her. The indoctrination, she's like, oh, like you're definitely hitting buttons 
conflict points that she has internally, as you mentioned, all the things that have happened to you. Uh, can I jump in here? Chris, would it be okay mm -hmm. if Nerjad steps in sometime around here? Can you get here? The, Nerjad was on his way to get their help in releasing the Nausikans. So you're up in the medical thing, not down at that lab. Yeah, you're oh, in the Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because... Is that 264? Oh! <laughs> um, I, I just want to put a bracket on this um, mm -hmm. direction. So she said, I, I, th I thought you were going to help me. I will help you as far as you need to get my crew off of this rock. Past that, I owe you nothing. Um, and she's kind of shocked and horrified and the look of betrayal on her face. Um, the breach of trust is significant for her. Okay. I understand that Dr. Hudson is totally justified in his mind about all of this stuff, that these folks are effectively um, guards in a prison that's holding you and your friends right. and crew against their will. That she trusted you. That she trusted you. You were a good and prisoner. You were helpful. And One of the good ones, right? A kindred spirit. <laughs> um, so the, the Turnervound has definitely shaken her to her core. Um, and she seems to be having trouble Sorry processing... About it. That's, that's fine. Um, she seems to be having trouble processing this reality. Uh, Commander Kidneyel. Um, Nirjad, as you are making your way towards the medical center, you catch a sight of the male servitor, a sort of a running away from um, the Servitor 264, running away from the medical center um, in what can only be described as a distressed fashion. Far, too far away for you to do anything unless you want to deviate entirely and focus on um, stopping him, but he takes off. But you make your way into the medical center and you see an unusual sight. The, you the see doctor Dr. is Hudson, threatening somebody. You see Dr. Hudson uh, brandishing a medical instrument in a very menacing manner um, at a cowering Servitor 251. Um, you're not sure exactly what happened, but you can probably piece it together. Nurjad, bypa yeah, <laughs> Nurjad yeah. bypasses the piecing it together thing and looks over to the doctor and like comes to parade rest and goes, Doctor, do you need any assistance? That depends on what the server's next choice of action is. Um, She just says, I I'm programmed to preserve life that's all I'm and trying to do. And you've been issued a protocol to destroy it. And and she winces um, in a like in a mechanical tick sort of way. Yes. And I'm I'm trying to find a way to not carry out those orders. It will affect you and the others that you talked about as well. All of you will be affected. Will you not help me try and stop it? Our crew will try and stop the caretaker from committing genocide. Yes. It is the least we could do to follow our own rules. Much less those of human decency. Clearly something happened on the walk over. What is happening? The queens have been deemed irregular. And a protocol to reset the experiment has been issued. I see. Uh, 251, would you assist us, since you want to stop this as badly as we do in reversing the indoctrination process of our crew. Um, she takes a moment to just process these words. It's like you're speaking her language, but she doesn't understand the order that you put the words in. 
So it, it takes a moment for her to parse it. What? How will that help? I have the best crew in the entire galaxy that you currently have under your sway. My captain is not here. That's another thing to figure out. But if the queens are about to be annihilated, that means things are happening. And I have a crew that is ready to follow orders and save everyone. Um, she looks warily at Dr. Hudson and slowly moves to a cabinet. Um, the door slides open and she pulls out a small box very slowly and sets it on the counter. And then with sort of one hand, she opens it up and you see sort of a, a headset sort of device inside. This is the indoctrination tool. We do one at a time. It, we can't apply it to a whole population. Excuse that, me. We <laughs> Jeffess! <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and she said, you, you would starve to death before we got even a fraction of them done. Servitor, please. Uh, <laughs> let, let me go get my engineer. Uh, Doc, with Jiffus's help and the servitor, do you think that you can get this ready for mass work? Yeah, I will get Shavor. I will get Shavor and we will propagate our um, primitive technique to see how quickly we can get this spread around our crew at least within the gladiators' barracks. And I guess, like, if you're heading off to go do that, to kind of, like, round out the scene, um, Doc does, like, set the scalpel down. Okay. Um, and... Definitely eases the tension. Yeah. I did just realize <clears throat> that uh, Nurjad is like, oh, and I also need 12 Nausikans released from prison. Just, um, just a quick little thing. Just as a way to generate momentum, it's not a, you, I mean, she's a, under your direct physical control. So, but uh, go ahead and give me a command presence roll. Or hang on, that didn't I, squirrel in traffic. You know what I meant. Presence command. Presence command. Thank you. Command presence. Same thing. Yes. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Would this be? classified as diplomacy mm, you kind of have her <laughs> yeah big disadvantage you're not trying to entice her to do something you're right you know ordering her under pain of violence <laughs> sure. um i think we have a momentum uh yes yeah, we, we generate it's a difficulty zero task this is basically just to generate momentum for you guys yeah i guess it's true yeah we'll just leave them one in there and roll my two dice Okay. Um, so difficulty zero, you can bank two more men to them. Cool. Okay. We'll get you guys on the board, counter some of that massive threat pool I built up. Thanks, um, Captain. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> Make him deal with it. <laughs> he thrives in such circumstances. <laughs> so, um, what is the plan from here? Uh, You've taken charge. Servitor um, 251 is not an active agent at this point. She's following what you want her to do. Uh, so what is what is the plan? Nershad's plan is to go get Shavor and the Nausikans and the, the pilots and kind of work his way down through his security staff and get them uh, undoctrinated and... I think possibly securing. Well, I guess all the queens are all over the place. So I guess at least start with the one local queen, um, so Coleman's queen, uh, probably the seat of Ares, I would guess, but uh, that hasn't been confirmed. Uh, and then start to get control of an area. Right, um, I'm going to say for story purposes of that conversation, planning and next steps and stuff happened out loud mm -hmm. with Dr. Hudson. Mm -hmm. And she pipes up and she says that the caretaker is taking down the communication system, um, which will be considered a crisis. The 
Council of 14 and their senior staff will be assembling. If you're going to do anything on this planet, your efforts would be much more productive if you used their resources as well. Is there anything you know about the caretaker that you have not told me? I know a lot. I don't know that any of it is relevant right now. What, what is the caretaker? We can theorize that the caretaker is um, an artificial entity of some kind. We don't know. We've never laid eyes on the physical embodiment of the caretaker. But we are we are programmed to be questioning and inquisitive. So we had theories that there was a, an artificial entity that was running the infrastructure behind the scenes. If that's the case, it would have a central location somewhere, but we don't know where. You've never interacted directly with the caretaker. It's always been through message screens and things of that nature. Then I believe that is what you and I shall work on. He sort of shrugs and says, okay. okay. But the, the clock is ticking. You'll find we work well under pressure. Right. Um, she will uh, do as she's been instructed, but she's definitely not a, um, an enthusiastic assistant. So she'll need a lot of oversight and direction and stuff like that. Right. Her will is engaged in the task. Right. It's just the point I'm making. Okay. Um, so we cut to um, the captain, Captain Chuchular. And it just making, looked a whole lot of ass. Um, on the run. Making, on the run, um, making your way through the streets of the city on foot. Mm -hmm. um, the queen has uh, long ago discarded her impractical, but you know, stylish and comfortable footwear um, to better improve speed and stealth. Um, she definitely is going with a plan, is sort of the vibe you're getting. As she's, you know, you've all seen the pictures of the you know girlfriend dragging her boyfriend through different that's kind of the situation is you're looking at the city with this giant amazon woman holding your hand in front of you as she drags you through the city um but she's definitely moving with a purpose um and after a period of time um you enter um what appears to be a um a residential district and based on just the scope and um architecture this is would be like for queens would be living here this would be personal quarters areas um and you guys get into a lift and this is the first time you stop moving in uh, probably close to an hour or an hour and a half wow um she's not winded at all despite the pace and you've been having to jog to keep up with her um but she definitely appears to have like resolved purpose but she hasn't said anything Just riding the elevator in silence? Uh, once we get into the elevator, mm -hmm. uh, Captain Chichalor will um, walk in, kind of will lean against the back wall with one arm, and then turn around and lean against the back and say, ah, Are you going to finally tell me where we're going? I have a friend who works... Um, for the seat of Athena. Oh. Now, I realize that what good. just happened might have been unexpected. Uh, however, I would anticipate that it will happen again. So, does your friend happen to have access to weapons? Um, as a response, she just says she's a mem she works for the seat of Athena. Well, all right. 
as if that's answer enough. Uh, and and he says, I mean, if if uh, if I can assume uh, that um, Athena embodies all the same aesthetics and and qualities she did where I well no he wouldn't say that she does in the history of of a planet in the Federation then I think we'll be in good hand. Her head snaps over to you. Smiles like a Cheshire smile. And then she <laughs> stabs a button and the lift comes to an abrupt stop. And she says, what did you just say? Well, considering the wool has been pulled off of your eyes, it's time to abandon pretense. Uh, Giannis, I and my crew were abducted ostensibly for your benefit. I'm the captain of a starship from very far away, I assume. And only recently, I and several members of my crew were released from the imposed indoctrination and obliviousness that kept us here as participants in this giant scheme for your elevation. Give me an insight and something. I'm not sure. Insight what. command, considering it's social relationships. Um, I'm going to say insight security. All right. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Do you think I have any focuses that apply? Um, considering I don't know exactly what I'm rolling for. Right, you're, you're trying to, uh, what I'm looking for is to see if you can pick up sort of the vibe of what's going on in her head as she's looking at you and Oh, okay, gotcha. Hmm. Maybe uh, it's a, a risky thing to reveal that to her in this moment. I'll go I for that, it, sure. I, I felt it was appropriate considering that, you know, everything that's happened might as well put all our cards on the table. Yeah, you basically just spilled all the beans. Yes. All right, cool. Roll in, roll in. Yeah. All right. What was the what was the threshold? Uh, difficulty was one, so you have two momentum. You can bank them or obtain information. Okay, I will bank mm -hmm. one, and then I do want to go ahead. Well, yeah. Let me answer you first, and then you can decide what you want yes. to do. Perfect. Uh, so you were looking at. A very intelligent woman mm -hmm. who is making a um, possibly astounding series of earth-shattering, in her worldview, earth-shattering deductions in rapid succession. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. So she's processing everything you've just told her and weighing it mentally and shattering internal barriers. Ooh, fantastic. I want this train to keep going. It started with um, poetic affirmation. And it's continuing in a manner Captain Chichalor considers quite pleasing. So I've so, banked one and you can use the other to obtain information or bank that as well if you wish. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, so the, the information I would like to obtain, which is a little meta here, is... Uh, if he continues to reveal information, is that going to cause a problem for him in his relationship with her? Not his experience in greater society and what the council says, but is, is this going to lead to her trusting him more? Or is she going to start to think, you've been keeping a lot of things from me? There is some risk of that. I'll give you that as a, an assessment. Okay. But she's also aware that her eyes have been opened through your actions. All right. Excellent. Um, and that you are have already expressed a desire to help her continue to pull the wool off her eyes. Okay. Wonderful. So you think you're in a pretty good spot, but there is definitely a how long have you been hiding this from me sort of possible angle this might take. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I think he knows how to handle that if it comes to it. So he'll 
he'll after having shared that right he'll mm -hmm. uh he'll be more he'll he'll be more careful with what he reveals however he won't deny or or um disguised anything if she asks him a direct question sure. that, that's the tact he's going to take so you see a series of emotions play across her face um uh, confusion curiosity disappointment sadness and then it sort of settles down into like righteous anger yes yes this is what he wanted yes and she turns back towards the panel and she says it was all lies and she punches it and the lift continues to move um can't believe she's it's it's at this point that he really wish he had his communicator so he one at a time <laughs> yeah sorry go ahead that's good what were you saying now? Um, uh, I, I said, I can't believe the queen just did a Gibbs move. And if, you <laughs> yeah, have, if you've seen the show, you know what I'm talking NCIS, about. If you haven't seen yeah. it, move along. <laughs> You're not, don't um, waste your time with the show. <laughs> door opens up and she grabs you by the hand without waiting and drags you bodily out of the elevator mm -hmm. um, down a corridor and bangs on a door. Um, and the camera cuts um, to Vula in talking with the queen and there is a sudden loud bang at the doorway. <laughs> um, she jumps. I'm not expecting anyone. <laughs> and quickly checks the sensors. Yeah, I'm going to grab a weapon. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I need for like, I will protect you, my queen. <laughs> so she quickly moves over um, towards a cabinet and uh, pulls out what to her looks like a dagger, but in your case, it would be like a sword and hands it to you and says, stay out of sight. Um, okay. And then she reaches in the cabinet again and pulls out this long metal spear. Oh, yes. And heads over to the door. And she says, without opening it, who is there and disturbs me? Um, and you hear another voice saying it's Ionis. And then your queen relaxes and uh, a little. And she looks over towards where you're hiding and she says, she's a friend. Okay. I'm still holding on to my sword, though. Yeah. yeah she's like, she's a friend, dot, 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 what? Um, and she opens up the door. From your vantage point, you can see Captain Chuchalor um, in the, no, I'm dry. I'm carrying this thing with me as she's, as the queen has obviously come from some distance. And without waiting for your queen to invite her, she just barges in, dragging Chuchula with her and turns and closes the door herself. Um, and the two kings look at each other for a moment. Gonna nod at the captain. Captain? <laughs> and, and, and I'm saying that out loud. sort of crouching okay. behind a chair. Um, and... Uh, uh, Ariana uh, looks at the other queen and says, Ergani, there's some things I have to tell you. They're going to be shocking. But I, I know that if you think about it, it'll all make sense. And she starts in with all of the candidates that have been coming here, have been stolen from their lives. They've been brought here against their will. Um, and then uh, the, your queen, Villa, uh, who is apparently named Ergini, um, holds up her hand and she says, I know. I've always known. I've, Maybe. I've just <laughs> recently come to the same conclusion. And she motions for Villa to go out of hiding. Uh, Iannis um, looks over at Villa and then glances at Chuchalor, realizes she's still holding her hand quite tight and lets go. Chichalor, um, <laughs> but you can see the resemblance, right? <laughs> um, and Erogeni, um, looks, um, to Chuchalor and then back to Vrilla, and she says, One of yours, at the same time as Yanis looks to Chuchalor and back to Vrilla, one of yours. Um, and they have that moment where, oh. They've both been part of this, related to each other, and there's an exchange of information that happens quite rapidly between the two queens. 
Um, I'm just going to give you guys this for free. These are very intelligent women. Mm. Um, that have had to process a lot of uh, information very quickly and seem just fine doing it as they peel back the layers in quick succession. You hear fragments of, of sentences, like, and all about, and the other ones, I know, and then this, and I know, and mm -hmm. um, and very quickly they um, come to the conclusion that their entire society is based on lies. Bullshit. Um, and and Arigini comes to this, the the penultimate conclusion for her is that this hasn't this hasn't elevated us at all. This whole thing has done nothing but hold us back. Um, and Anna nods and she says, "I reached the same conclusion." If we're really going to follow in the footsteps of the ancients, we need to stop it. Um, and that's when uh, Erigone says, the communication systems are down. And Ianis is like, oh, that's going to be a problem. How are we going to tell anyone? Um, and feel free to jump in if you guys want to. Um, yeah. Um, otherwise, I will move on. Captain Churchill would say something. Sure. He'd say, we get my crew to fix it. Already on it, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I said I wish he had a communicator. <laughs> um, um, and Irigini, um looks to you and says, how many are your crew? He tells the exact number. 273. Yes, that's right. Um, thereabouts. Plus 12. Um, <laughs> I was going to say 276. Some deaths here and there, but... Right, and you've apparently adopted two of the queens, so that'd be 278 now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but they're... Um, and Ayanna says, but they've been indoctrinated. Not all of them. Or, or no, no. Originally, six of us have thrown off the shackles of the caretaker's that, indoctrination. Right? Is it more than that? There's, um, there's at surely. least seven. Because there's the four of us. Yeah. Um, okay. Shavor... Um, oh, yeah, Yeoman, Shavor, the Omen, and Jiffus. That's right, seven. That's, yeah, yeah. that's it, yeah, because we yeah, yeah. stopped doing it to try to not, like, draw too oh. much attention. Yeah, yeah. I thought I had been doing it sort of as people came through, but... Well, we had talked about that, but you guys decided um, because it's difficult to maintain the facade. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to, until you had more information to go on, you didn't want to try <clears> risking it. So, yeah, we, um... We know how to quickly unindoctrinate people. But you'd still have to do them individually. That depends. Have two hands. <laughs> That's our chief science officer, kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, determination, I love it. Um, always practical. And um, I think he says there's, good, there's a better way. Resources of the Council of Fourteen, all of their structure, their servants, that would certainly make that process go a lot smoother. But with the communication system down, how are we going to get to everybody? And at that point, there's another knock on the door. Um, same tension, everybody sort of gets in ready poses, you guys are spirited away, so you're not visible. Uh -huh. um, and Erigone, uh goes to the door and opens it, and you see another queen standing there, looking a little frazzled. Her hair is a little must. Um, she's got a bit of a bruise on her cheek, and oh. her clothing is torn a little strategically. Oh, no. Um, strategically? <laughs> for, you know, uh, uh, some I know, for the original series. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> this been in the context. <laughs> but she is still very much a queen. Mm-hmm as she presents a, um, a, a staff with coiled snakes on it. Um, and the two queens, uh, um, uh, Ionis and um, Erigone, sort of they're surprised and not sure what to make of it. When the new queen um, I have to get my notes. 
Yeah, that's the same thing I say, Craig, when I start clicking the random name generator. No, I have... That's just where I have it buried in my notes, because I have my notes as two big blobs. Sounds like, it's her <laughs> sounds like Hermes is here. That's what I was going yes. to say. Or at least the one responsible for the there we go. Hermes. Um, so this queen is looking haggard, but she bears a caduceus. And she says that there's a citywide communications failure. The 14 have been called to assemble, but new servitors have appeared that appear to be trying to impede that effort. We are assembling. I kind of want to get the name right. I really should have organized these better, and, and I wasn't on pharmaceuticals. Um, I want to get the name right. They're assembling at the um, the forum. So the two queens look at each other and then glance to you guys um, and say, that's actually really good. Um, they uh, And then they motion for you two to come out. And Ionis uh, and uh, Erdogany say, we would like to bring these candidates with us. They have important information of the Council of 14 we need to hear. Um, and the bearer of the caduceus says, so be it. You'll have to justify it to your superiors. I'm only here to deliver the message. Um, and now that you can see her more clearly, like she's definitely been in a scuffle. Mm. Um, and um, she says just once more, uh, make yourselves, uh, make your way to the forum as soon as possible. Um, expect trouble. And then she turns to go, unless somebody wants to intervene. No, not I'm just going into the cabinet, pulling weapons out, and talking to the captain. Fantastic, um, yes. <laughs> so this cabinet has, like, um, there's a couple of spears, bright and shiny, and metal that looks like bronze, but yeah. has a high sheen and seems very strong. Mm -hmm. um, there is a Perfect breastplate bronze. and yeah. battle skirt and um, what? shin guards, thigh guards, knee pads, calge, um... Yes. There's a whole suit of like warrior, Greek warrior armor in this cabinet, uh -huh. um, along with a small sword, um, a couple of different daggers. Sized um, for a, a queen? Of, sized for a queen. So the dagger would Ice be a sword right? in your hands. Yeah. Um, so uh, Arikini, um notices you glancing and she says, help yourself. I have plenty. I know, like I have already opened the cabinet and pulled out <laughs> the sword and tossed it over. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's gonna be a little unwieldy. I would need two hands for that one. But the small sword I could use is a long sword. Um, the spear would be pretty big for you guys, but it mm -hmm. would be like a, using a twenty foot spear effectively, right? Oh yeah, the mm. pike. Yeah, it would be more of a pike in your hands rather than a spear mm -hmm. that they could use. Yeah. Um, but is there's there a... if you want, you can certainly outfit you guys if you wish. Yes, absolutely, definitely. Do they have a pilum, um, you know, like the kind of fist shield that perhaps would serve as a large shield? Sure. In the hands of the captain. Yep. Yep, I that mean, could work. We're gonna fight like, yeah, like a, a gauntlet with a shield on the end of it. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That kind of mm -hmm. thing, which could then perhaps be a lot larger on the body of the, the captain. Yeah. Um, and it would be easy enough for you to like strip down most of the gauntlet part because it would be too big for you, but still Excellent. be able to use a shield. Fantastic. So that's no problem. So you guys can outfit yourselves if you wish. Wonderful. Um, you may take up to two resistance in gear if you want it will slow you down and make things some tasks a little more difficult you won't be a stealth oh i see that's a good point then i'm mm -hmm. just gonna take the sword yeah i'm just taking yeah. the sword yeah right. yeah is it yeah, a I'll scabbard see. oh of course okay, great and this is all gear fit for a queen right um mm -hmm. yeah right just make it sure you know um so you guys can add from the rule book there's a large sword entry okay um you can add that open the rule book. <laughs> to your arsenal i believe it's on 118 i could be wrong I will keyword search it. What's the word? Blade, sword. Oh, yeah, like a mechleth. Vicious one. Perfect. 
It's the same as a uh, Ushantor. One ninety three, by the way, Ash. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the name of the place I call it the Forum, but it's actually the Pritaean. Oh, okay. Pritaean is like the the functional seat of government. Gotcha. Um, where you were before is like the ceremonial. Like where all the thrones were and stuff like that. Mm, yeah. That's more the the ceremonial official place. But the um, Britannian is where the actual work gets done. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, is this a blade or a the, the other one, the heavy blade? Or a heavy blade. Heavy blade. Okay. Oh, it's two. If so you're taking a sword, is it one handed or two handed? For you, it would be uh, like a, it would still be a heavy blade. A heavy blade can still be one handed. Okay, just because in the in the um, charter it says. Uh, it says two regular handed. blades one handed and a heavy blade is two handed. Yeah, in this case, the heavy blade, because you're of the equipment it's made out of and all that kind of stuff, it oh. could be a one handed heavy blade, but use the heavy blade stats. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. All uh, right, unless awesome. You, unless you're taking a dagger, sure. then use the next one down. Makes sense. Okay. Um, so you guys uh, head out into the city. Mm-hmm. Um, checking my notes. We burn through stuff quite quickly. So like communications are down, and then 14, blah blah blah. Okay. Um I think we'll just cut right to that. Unless uh, you were gonna pick up your squad of death troopers. Nujad? I mean, yes. Uh... yes. Easy enough um to get that done. Um, there is some commotion in this city, uh, people getting confused and a little concerned, some people out in the streets and stuff like that, but no one really impedes your process. Um, when everyone else is confused, you look like you know what you're doing. So, you know, they're content to let you go about your business. Excellent. Um, so he's enough to get your Nausicans freed. And that's when it, you hear through, um, other conversations and word being passed, um, that there's going to be an assembly of some kind at the Brutanaeum. Prutanan. Um and easy enough for you guys to pass messages back to each other. You don't have communications per se, um, but you're in fairly close proximity to one another. Um, so easy enough to get everyone to converge there, and we could do that if unless somebody wanted to do something else. Uh right now, uh Nirjad, until he hears back from the captain, is basically mm. going into kind of a stronghold mode. He's got he knows where the vast majority of the crew is there with the gladiators and stuff like that. So unless I've um, unless I'm mistaken, feel free to correct. The, it's a it's a small subset of the crew is with the gladiators. Most are scattered elsewhere throughout the city and oh, okay. pockets here and there and that kind of thing. Yeah, so um, there is something that Captain Jujular would would pose to both um Irigane and uh Ionis before we leave, which is that my queens, if we are going to share our insight with the assembled council of 14. I'd humbly suggest that you allow me to summon or um, gain the benefit, gain the support of the rest of our associates, considering it might present more strong, compelling evidence when the seven of us are assembled, all having thrown off the indoctrination. Um, so there's a moment of, um, I don't exactly know what to call it, but um, authority assertion um, as uh, Ionis answers without even waiting for it, getting to, to voice an opinion, says you have whatever you need. Excellent. Um, and um, the camera then I think just fades us back into a large, um, um, large structure closed. Um, it wasn't open like the the, the formal thrones where you guys were before. Um, and there's a lot of activity. Um, you see, um, there's armored and weaponed up queens standing guard. Uh, some of them have obviously been in scuffles. Oh. Um, you see off to one side a small pile of broken android parts um, that have a striking resemblance to the two servitors. Um, <laughs> uh, so whatever altercation has happened, the, um, the androids definitely got the a much worse end of the deal. Um, because you're in a company of two queens that are well known, um, 
there's no issue for you guys getting inside, um, and you enter into the um, uh, Britannian. Um, there are, as expected, 14 thrones on raised diocese around an oval sort of room with a, a larger throne at one end of the room. And you see the 14 queens. Uh, some of them are just arriving. Um, you can see them milling about, taking, uh, getting briefs from some of their servants, who are also all queens. Um, this is definitely a, a public service made up of queens at this point. So it's only their senior um, representatives that are all here. Uh, but they're, um, some are briefing, some are waiting. Uh, some um, are definitely like of the warrior sort of stripe. There are a lot more than than I thought then. So it's not just the 14. It's not just the 14. The 14 are the heads, but they have structures underneath them. And generally um, it's it's meritocracy, I'm sure, but it's kind of age graded, right? So the older will be the, the, the 14. Yes, okay. generally um, that's not a, a hard and fast rule, but yeah. Um, and generally those with more wisdom and experience are the ones that lead, um, but it's not uh, universally true. Uh, for example, one of the queens is definitely um, younger um, in appearance um, to the others, uh, but still apparently has the same level of authority. Um, so as the uh, um, commotion sort of settles down, the, the two queens that are with you, um, um, Ionis and um, Erebkini, um, and you've got your crew assembled with you, Captain. Yes. So Jiffis, um, Levine. All seven. Uh, all seven are there. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, he doesn't want him stuck in the barracks. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Iona says, uh, let us lead the discussion initially. But we'll need you to provide additional context. So we shall. For whatever flaws in our personalities the indoctrination might have introduced, we are all of us curious and intelligent. I am confident that the Council of 14 will understand the situation adequately and be as horrified as we are. Do the caretakers have eyes here? Yes. But as you, and she kind of looks to some of the warriors near the door, we're beyond the caretakers reach here. <laughs> There's so much foreshadowing here that it's like, mm, mm -mm. <laughs> um, and, and some of the warriors have definitely seen combat, but definitely made out better for it. Um, so there's um, at the head of the room with a larger um, throne is sitting. Um, there's an older woman sitting there um, holding a staff and an orb. And she just sort of picks up the staff and thumps it down on the ground once. And the room was quiet and everybody sort of takes their seats rather quickly. Um, and there's some sort of normal political C-SPAN kind of introductions and setting the stage. Uh, but to summarize it, there's a crisis. Communication systems are down. Um, they need to be, uh, that situation needs to be addressed because many of their functions and abilities will not function without communications. Um, this is, in their experience, unprecedented, but such um, incidents have happened in the past. So they talk about uh, plans to move forward, and they seem to be going through a speaker's list. Uh, so there's a few people that got on the list before your queens, uh, but eventually um, Queen Ionis is called forward. Um, and uh, the queen at the head says the seat of Zeus recognizes Ionis. And Ionis steps forward, uh, glancing at the Edigone for support. And uh, nods to Cutting Chuchular. And she begins to recite a poem. Yes. Um, and I'll I'll just give you this for free, but if anyone wants to roll to bank some extra momentum, you might be able to learn more um, out of it. Uh, but the effect is pretty quickly evident on the assembly. 
um, that there's some shock and confusion that they've never heard these words before. She composes herself. Yes. Um, and it's a story of uh, um, a serpent and deception that it sowed, mm. um, telling people something was true when it was false and that kind of thing. And it's, um, I, I love the sort of moving, especially because you know the story behind it. Um, but she concludes that um, for all the trouble that was caused, the source of it all was the serpent. Um, and there's a lot of communication and everyone seems to be sort of processing. And Iona says, I'm doing a lot of talking. I just realized that. <laughs> um, Iona says, these are words that we have never heard before put into a poem. I know that I never conceived of such a thing happening, but it is in the histories, it is in the stories, the muses inspired others to create, to produce new things. The muses didn't just recite old histories and old poems, they inspired others to create new things. But each of us in all of our duties have been told that things must be a certain way. We've been raised that things have to follow a certain path, a certain order. And we've just accepted that truth. But it was a lie. We have been told things that are not true. The volunteers that come to us are not volunteers. They have been stolen from their lives, brought here against their will, and been made to serve. Several have recently found a way to undo the indoctrination that has been forced upon them. I will call upon them now to speak on their behalf. Listen to the wisdom that they have to share. The knowledge of our culture as seen through an outsider's eyes. And analyze it for yourself and draw your own conclusions. And then she bows and steps back and motions to Captain Chichiro. And that is a good spot for a pause. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us again. Um, for Twitch guys, we're going to be 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. It might take a little bit longer. There's some folks need extra tea and 10 minutes. At this point, um, we'll probably be a quick break. Yep. Uh, but for uh, YouTube folks, uh, we'll see you in less than a second because Drew doesn't leave much of a pause between the sessions. So, eh. hi, everybody. Uh, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Occultus Anonymous. You will notice we are down. And Chris needed to bow it for the rest of the night tonight. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. Um, uh, we were okay, at a convenient... I had to make a house call. Yeah, we're at a convenient portion for that to happen. Uh, anyway, so we pick up with uh, Captain Chuchilor having been invited to the floor. And feel free to invite others if you wish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you have the floor of the Council of Fourteen. Great. All the queens and their senior servants are listening to you as you step forward. Wonderful. Um, so you had a chance to outfit yourself. So what are you wearing in this instance, just so I have a clear mental picture? Well, I think as you're going to gather from what he says or how he tries to terminate his speech, um, he's going to be garbed as uh, an Athenian general would be garbed. So Ooh. evoking Pericles. Hey, I, I love it. I love the imagery. Okay. Fantastic. With um, with a Xiphos uh, sheathed. At his hip. Okay. Uh, so what Chichalor would do, and before you know, I get in character, right? I think his plan would be to introduce everyone, which I'm happy to do, right? Um, and then request that first Lieutenant Zakolnin, then Commander Kidney all um, uh, share some of their own insights, and then he's going to finish up with an exhortation to the assembled council and all the queens. Okay. Great. So, Captain Chichilor says, uh, and this is the first time he's going to use her name. Um, he says, thank you, Queen Ionis. Uh, Council, 
you know me in one primary respect, and that is as a candidate in your noble trials, which up until this point, you understood to be for the betterment of your society and ostensibly yourselves. And now you know that it is for a different purpose, and our participation was not something that we chose. We are here from far away on a mission of exploration and deliberate contact and the sharing of culture and understanding with other peoples. So being here achieves that in some respects. However, as in all cases, we prefer that there is reciprocity, mutual understanding, and consent. I have brought with me, or at, or no, he is it, um, at the, I, I have requested that the rest of my unindoctrinated crew join me here so that we can discuss with you some of our experiences to lend proof to the words that I intend to share with you afterwards. And so first, before I elaborate, let me request that my Lieutenant Colin please present her insights as the Chief Science Officer for our vessel. Um, one of the queens uh, raises a hand and the chair recognizes them. Um, and they ask a question about indoctrination and want a clarification. And they ask um, the seat of, what am I here? Seat of Hestia. Mm, okay. Um, to respond. Um, she rises and uh, gives a brief ex uh, explanation of the. She calls it the education process for new arrivals. Um, that the process isn't designed to give them the knowledge they would need to function as members of the society, language, understanding, comprehension, the structures and customs of the society. But she does add, this is unknown technology from the ancients. It was provided to us um, by the servitors. It is possible that the education process is more than what we were led to believe. Some murmurs around the room at that point, and then the seat of Hestia sits. Um, and this uh, older, imposing sort of woman with the staff at the head of the chamber looks back to you and says, continue. So, the captain will motion to Rilla. Trying to think of like what I can. Yeah, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. Just if there's anything you want to share. Um. Yeah, I guess we're. To, well, I feel like Commander Kitney all this best place to explain how we woke up. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I'll just uh, start with explaining everything before we came here. Um. We were on an exploratory mission of our space where our people hadn't gone before we found a distress beacon and presumably that's what brought us here um, how forthcoming are you with the details of what you, of the activities and things that you're up to before you arrived here. I'm asking because a series of queens are going to ask um, additional probing questions for clarification and additional context and that kind of information. Um, I mean, basically just saying that we were essentially a science vessel. We were exploring, trying to gather unknown information from new places. Our people send out crews to learn. All right, and so and that's the level of detail you're willing to get into, or would you answer more specific questions if they ask? I mean, if they start asking about like, what are some specific things we have found, then yeah. Yeah, and like your specific position on the ship, they're like looking to gauge your the, the veracity of your tale sort of thing. So they're asking for additional context 
to get uh, yeah. your response. I definitely would tell them all that. Just that okay. I was the chief. All right. And um, the chief science officer of our vessel, wherever it may be. Okay. Um so you're you spend about twenty minutes answering questions from the various queens in a you know Robert's Rules of Order sort of formal um process. Um uh, but eventually the the last question is answered and no one else uh, rises to propose any further questions for you. Um, your words have definitely had an impact. This is the first time that they've heard about somebody having a life before coming here. I mean, everyone's had a life. They I remember being on a planet and having a family and those sort of general details, but they don't have, like nobody had a specific profession before they arrived. Um, no one's ever reported that as something that they have memories of. Um, which is new for them to process. Okay. Who is next? Yeah, when I finish, I'll step aside for a uh, uh, commander kit meal. Because you picked up here. Kit meal is pacing like a lion in a cage. Mm -hmm. um, the the whole like speak softly carry a big stick yeah we're past the the speak softly portion of the day um, mm -hmm. but yeah Kid Mule steps forward and says listen by sheer chance and anatomy did I manage to break indoctrination and therefore wake all well those that you see here there there does not need to be further discussion about this if you have questions i will answer them but i call this council to action now you have servitors coming to stop this meeting you have a caretaker who has shut down services and according to servitors 264 and 251 all the queens here are to be to be killed by the caretaker that's new information that causes quite a stir. Uh, there's some raised voices, some people shouting, um, and the room kind of devolves uh, for um, a minute or two into chaos um, as that bombshell sort of got dropped before. Go ahead. That might be a convenient moment for Tushalor to chime in. However, I don't want to step on Drew's toes if there's more that Kidney all wanted to say. Oh yeah, no, Kidneyl is doing the whole like reading the riot act to the crew kind of thing. I, right. I'm sure yeah. the captain has seen this. He's like, yep, everybody go ahead and yell and scream and complain. And like, <laughs> I'll be here when you all are done and ready to- Metaphorically continue. slapping them on the nose Fantastic. with a rolled up newspaper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but So if you want to jump into the chaos, sure if you wish. Okay. Um, so Chichalor will, will step forward, right? And as they're yelling, <clears throat> He'll, uh, he'll clear his throat um, and then he'll um, he'll he'll turn towards Erigone and ask if he can temporarily borrow her spear. Um, and this is a conversation that's basically private between the two of you because everyone else is sort of busy yelling at each other. So uh -huh. she hands it over, sure. Okay, and then um, considering how tall it is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, he moves it um, close to his body and then balances it so that he uh, it's um, close to the center of his gravity, right? And then raises it up as high as he can and slams it on the ground. Okay. For just to gauge impact, can you give me a presence candle? Absolutely. There's no real like cost of failure or complications or anything. I'm just looking at you. Kate's how got it. What is yeah? Boom. Very impactful. Um, you can bank two of those if you wish, or I, can, or I can just take them to increase the impact of your actions. Yeah, do that. I want their attention. Yep. Okay. Um, so you slam the spear down quite solidly, um, and crack a large section of the floor. Um, with the attendant sort of spout up of dust and things like that. And that definitely grabs their attention. You also notice like a raised eyebrow, but a, it might be a little gleam of respect from the older woman sitting at the head 
um, <laughs> head chair. Yeah. This is somebody who recognizes the voice of command and the um, um, trapments of authority. Excellent. And she has recognized that you wield those um, Wonderful. with, a, with a, an experienced hand. So the room falls silent and there's some people like in the midst of gesticulating at each other as they sort of stop and they look. Um, you've definitely interrupted everything that was going on and you have their full attention. Fantastic. So he'll uh, politely hand the spear back to Erigone, right? Mm -hmm. Carefully balancing it upright so that um, it's not too much torque on his wrists. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then he takes another step forward and pauses uh, for two seconds, um, looking them all in the eyes, and says, You know me as Erolor. My name is Captain Erolor Chuchalor of the Federation Starship Curie. You've heard from my crew. You understand the situation. And I'm sure you can assume that there will be more revelations of unexpected impact that will be leveled upon you before we resolve this situation. However, we cannot descend into chaos again while we make a strategy to overthrow the caretaker's regime. All of the candidates, I presume, have been brought here against their will for the sole benefit of some program of elevation. The good Dr. Hudson has explained his understanding of the origins and purpose. You have heard about our mission ahead of time, which hints at the missions of the others who were brought here and therefore prevented from undertaking their own tasks. You have heard the urgency from Commander Kitniall, and you all have discussed among yourselves what bearing this information has on your own futures. There is but one thing we need do. We must assemble ourselves. We must not allow the caretaker's plan of purging to fall through, or not to fall through, say, to be carried out. You are the queens. You are raised and created and live to serve out the ideals of a pantheon that I know of from a planet my father is from, from a culture that heavily infuses the exploration and the boldness of the Federation that I am blessed, no, he wouldn't say blessed, he'd say, of the Federation, what, yes, yes, that's right, of the Federation I am I, I am fortunate to be a part of. And then he pauses again and he says, I am a deliberate man. And the attire I've chosen for this purpose is deliberate because it reminds me of a great Athenian general by the name of Pericles. Pericles once gave an important oration in the context of a funeral because deaths are a point of transition. They're a point of which we confront our mortality, wherein we can recognize that we've lost something and yet there are things that we retain. I believe that this moment is the death of your innocence and a death of your ignorance the death of the caretaker's control on your destiny. And so on as we assemble, I suggest that we are now fighting a battle. And to paraphrase that great Athenian general, I'd suggest that on that battlefield, we remember, quick, hold on. Don't want to... Yes. Um, we remember that it is always better to resist than to die resisting. 
than to live submitting. And if we are to fade from the scene, let us fade with a sword in our hand and with shackles around our wrists. Right. In the silence that follows, um, the older woman at the end of the hall rises with purpose. She marches down the stairs and crosses the floor to stand in front of you. Um, she is above average for the um, the queen's height-wise. Oh wow! And peers down from you or at you from an imperious height. And she draws up to her full height. And she's about 15 feet away from you, so you don't have to look like crane your neck to see up at her. <laughs> Thank you. She says, Captain Irlor Chuchalor. I am Nikea. I hold the seat of Zeus. And I am chair of this council. And its voice. I convey the consensus it builds to our people. We think ourselves in command of our destinies. And she takes a moment to look from face to face in the crowd. But it seems clear to me, as I'm sure it is with everyone else here, that that illusion of authority is just that an illusion. That others have been taken against their will, regardless of the nobility of the cause, is unconscionable. This injustice must be rectified. You say that we are at war. I do. And the caretaker is our enemy. In this present moment, they are. And we fight a foe without an army or soldiers. But who controls our very lives? And she turns from you to speak to the crowd. The caretaker runs everything in our world. She looks over to another one. The very food we eat looks up to another. The clean air that we breathe looks to another. The water that sustains us, all provided by machines that the caretaker control. If we are to address the injustice that has been perpetrated in our name, many lives will be put at risk. This is not a decision to be made lightly. For all my wisdom and experience, and she starts to walk back towards her seat, even I cannot foretell where the end of this road will lead, nor what our society would look like at its end. 
and she starts to climb the stairs towards her seat. But it seems clear to me that whatever the destination and whatever form our society takes at its end, we owe it to ourselves and to those that have gone before and journeyed across the void and touched the lives on a distant star to instill in them the sense of justice and freedom that they themselves espoused and that we aspire to. We owe it to them, our forebears, to do what we can to set this right, even if it should burn our civilization to the ground. That is my view. And then she takes her seat. I'm, I'm going to step forward. Mm -hmm. We might be able to help you grow your own food. Make your own machines to keep clean air and water under your control. A caretaker does not half to run everything. We have the knowledge for a lot of it. I'm sure among the other people that have been brought here, we can build everything you need. We can teach you to take care of yourselves. Um, one of the other queens arises and Nikea recognizes uh, Enthusa of the seat of Hephaestus, who says such a transition is certainly possible, but it will take time. We have many mouths to feed. Many would be lost while we work up the infrastructure to sustain us. I say this not to dissuade anyone if this is the consensus path. But so that everyone is aware of the facts. Even if we were to see, succeed in this, it would still be costly. Some murmurs. Uh, but Antusa sits down. I am going to spend two threat. And then I'm going to spend two more. I don't like that. <laughs> Servitors burst in. Time to fight. Dun, 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 you dun, 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 dun. hear from the upper level of this chamber a voice cry out. Um, and easy enough to track. You see Servitor 264. Oh! up on a balcony, looking even at the distance you're at, um, like someone who has become unmoored. Oh, yeah. Um, and his voice rings out. You talk of burning it all down. And that's what's going to happen. I've seen it. It's happened before, and it'll happen again. He'll turn off the lights, kill the power, and you will starve. You can't stop it. They tried before. They've tried before. Kidney steps up. Mm -hmm. 264. I will uh, give you, because of your tactical officer position, information that he is armed. Cool. Uh, which actually, side thing, Ralph, did you not bring me a weapon? Like, rude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, that's that's fine. Kidmiel doesn't care. I uh, will I, I think will allow Ralph? you. <laughs> I didn't get in the cabinet, fair enough. <laughs> I will allow you to spend two momentum to create an adventure, advantage to say that you have from the scraps and bits and pieces of disintegrated 
Uh, oh wait, on, no, on no. This is this Android, is what happened. It would be very, very easy for you to say, "Oh, hey, that's one of them." I got one of their guns and real, have it with you. Real quick, Captain Chichlor would just hand over the phaser, the non-lethal phaser, to Kidney All when they got there. Right, the one that you've already got, which again is like Kidney's sure. not ready for that. That's fine. Um, and okay. Kid Bill isn't afraid to take a hit. Doc mm-hmm. Hudson is right here. <laughs> right here, Chris. Um, yes. But uh, he says 264. Last time it was the queens versus the caretakers. Now it's these queens and the crew of the USS Curie. The caretaker doesn't stand a chance. Now come down here and join us. Um, I will ask for a presence and command role. You are dealing with somebody who is suffering from a mental break, Mm -hmm. um, has been traumatized, Mm -hmm. and has decided that they cannot see this happen again. Sure. I'm setting the difficulty at three. Cool. I have a focus that applies. Because if this okay. is in diplomacy, I don't know what is. Sure. Um, uh, we also have, by my count, four momentum. You have four momentum. So that I only need three of that to take two additional dice. Mm-hmm. Do I burn my determination? Yeah, because I want to save. I want to save him. Uh, Because I'm pretty sure this definitely sits with speak softly, carry a big stick. Uh, Let me see something real quick. Mm -hmm. If you want to wait on spending your life. Reading something? Yeah, I was reading to see if I could do something. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, you know, I'm not going to use my determination because I remember I have an, another talent for this. Diffuse the tension. Whenever I oh, attempt to task uh, to persuade someone not to resort to violence, I may add a yeah. bonus d20. So uh, yeah. I'm rolling five d20 <laughs> with my okay. focus. Uh, yeah. So, would you say three, right? Difficulty is three. Do it. Yes. Hey, that's good. So for the two extra, you may create an advantage if you wish. Um, however, you want to implement that in the situation, or you can bank those extra, or basically get back what you yeah, some of what you. Yeah, spent. I'm taking. I'm just going to take that as momentum. But yeah, Kidney okay. and, and specifically, this is why Kidney was not actually reaching for any kind of weapon. He just steps forward, mm-hmm. unarmed, unarmored, and just says two six four. Listen. You're, you're blowing this out of proportion. Last time you saw a bunch of queens, and those are the old queens. These are the new queens. These are the better queens. And the crew of the USS Curie. You've met Doc Hudson. The rest of us are just as brilliant. Different specializations, but just as brilliant. And it's the, the met Doc Hudson comments that sort of um, slices through the the trauma that he's trying to process. Um, and I'm just to f- sort of a fill in the blanks off camera vignette sort of plays. Mm-hmm. And we see like a young, very brand new, no hair, no clothing, uh, 264, um, processing the aftermath of what amounted to a forced famine. Um, and cleaning up the city afterwards, unaware of the impact, but knew that they had fought for their lives um, with all that they had, and it did no good. And then we see this servitor lifting um, a new baby out of a canister um, and riding herd on 14 children as... um, feedings and changings and then school and then playing um keeping them entertained and educated and slowly expanding out and then another generation and then another generation um and servitor 264 develops a paternal um 
care for this generations of queens that have been entrusted to his care. Um, and the thought of having to watch that whole line that he's nurtured since birth um, and was terrible and he couldn't grasp how he could let that happen but seemed powerless to stop it. And then your words sort of He's, he was a he was an entity that was drowning and from out of nowhere you threw him a kism ring and he clutches to that um, and with an emotional tremor in his voice he says you, you really think you can beat it? not a think 264 it's a no um, and that solid confidence um, sort of jolts him awake. Um, and you see him raise up a hand and he was holding um, a small control device of some kind. And he kind of glances at it and then smashes it. Just as, as I was thinking, Kitnia would say, if it's useful, don't break it. Mm -hmm. Never mind. <laughs> I couldn't watch them fade away. This seemed like a mercy, but if you think you can beat it, then let's beat it. And he comes down, digging a security throat, and after a moment or so, steps out on the floor and comes up to you. Everything I know. Kidneal interrupts and just pulls him in for a hug. Aww. Um, he's stiff for a moment, but then and just collapses into it. Tell me the last time this and, android has had a hug. And Literally all, never. <laughs> No, he was affectionate with the queens in a yeah, but um, it's, in the it's imitative a whole sort of way. But it's a whole other thing. Um, and just collapses into it, and you can just feel the tension and the stress um, being bled away by that simple act of kindness. Um, and after a moment, he pulls back and he says. I was gonna. Well, never mind. It doesn't matter anymore. No, it does. You didn't do it, so it doesn't matter. It has. It's wired into all of the control circuitry for every device in the city, and there's central nodes that all those controls get routed through. We can probably trace it with that. Let me introduce you to Jiffus. Uh, and, and Jiffus is like, really? <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me more. Yeah. And again, yeah. can you, uh, and, you know, Captain can feel free to divert because he's the captain, but Kidney basically says, I will take care of your queens if you help Jiffus protect my crew. Um, no problem. And they go off and start having a tete-a-tete. A -tete. Um, to share things. You um, thought Doc Hudson was brilliant. Wait till you get the <laughs> get a load of the <laughs> brains on this one. Um, um, and uh, Doctor Hudson is working with a servitor two five one. Did I get the name right? I think I got mm -hmm. it wrong. Yeah, no, and, yeah, and Jeff is working one. with servitor two six four. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so uh, uh, um, Jeff is working with servitor two six four to work on locating. There's got to be a central node of some kind for the caretaker. So that's what they're working on. Uh, Doug Hudson is working with Surger 251 on a way to mass unindoctrinate um, the candidates. Mm -hmm. um, so those are projects that are going to be working in the background. Uh, what are the three of you going to be engaged in? And you saw Commander Levine available as a resource as well. Fantastic. Um, and um, uh, Lieutenant, what's your face? 
you know, the other one should sure. work. So yeah. you have two other resources um, available as well if there's extra things you want them to we do. We also have the yeoman. Yeah. Oh, did we actually captain, get... is it, yes. did you, you wake oh, up? We got our tech- yeah, okay, we got one. Captain was like, we have to have it, and Kidney was like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> But in the um, event that something's happening, yep, and uh, dissent needs to be shared. It is Drew's opinion that basically, uh, Shavor, nope, not Shavor, Levine, um, mm-hmm. and her crew basically, he, I want them to go with the Nausicans because I'll mm-hmm. be honest, if there's anybody who can keep control of them, it'll be that badass crew of fighters. Um, they might be pilots, but you know, most of them are, you know, just as happy to be in the fight club to locate, uh, some form of flight craft, even if it's some mothballed stuff so we can get off the ground. That's, okay. that's Kit Neal's kind of my focus right now. Sure. Um, and I will, um, because of some work that you guys have done in the background, like that caretaker, the military forces that it can create and it can create them are the servitors, which are um, caretakers and nurturers and educators. They're not warriors. <laughs> they don't have any kind of combat routines at all. They're just, um, mm-hmm. they're, they're basically, um, you know, really adorable, mildly quirky math teachers. <laughs> they're not combat at all. So with your Nausicaan um, troops fighting security, there will be no issues for you guys uh, moving about the city. Um, there's nothing that the caretaking can do to stop that. That's not a problem. Um, okay. So they'll, um, Commander Levine will be working um, with Shavor about trying to locate some sort of transport to get you guys off planet, I presume. Mm-hmm. Or right. nothing okay. else, at least give us, because I'm sure the rail line is going to be shut down. And that will hopefully be something that allows transport around the ship or the ship, the city. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so transportation in general, but. Um, the the golden apple that they're or the golden fleece that they're after is actually a, a shipped off the planet. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they'll be working on that. And what are the rest of you going to do? I think I would be actually working with Jiffus to reestablish the um, communications network because okay. I've got the skills for it. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm that, engineering four, so. So that's a separate task, I think. So if you wanted to build a communications network. That's separate from what Jeffus is doing. Okay, yeah. Um, so that's fine. So getting establishing communications and being able to coordinate over distances um, and that will certainly help. Actually, help with that now. Yeah, the As a physical basically person there. Yeah. What okay. we um lost when the caretaker took down all of their homes. I want to try to. If I can't take control of that, try to patch together something else that would enable us to you know communicate. All right. Um. And the queens are not passive uh, observers yeah. and all of this. I, I have a suggestion for that. So, Okay, well, let me just insert this one little thing. Um, so, Ash, um, Rilla has introduced uh, to Ac- Acredina, who holds the seat of Hermes, and their job is communications, so they are more than willing to provide true resources for you um, to assist in your task. In the meantime, they will actually serve as runners to deliver messages and communications that way, sort of the old fashioned. They used to do it as like an honor of the ancients, sort of tests and races and things like that was sort of how they um, honored their tradition, but they still have those skills. So um, they'll be able to coordinate communications and you have um, two or three two resources if you wish to help with your project. Okay. Okay. Um, what else? So we got the two of you left. What are you guys going to be engaged in? Uh, understanding Kitney that always, you're you're likely to lose power at any moment. I think Kidney always going to be helping pretends to call. Yeah, if, if there's the not another task because I I bumped his engineering up and even got uh, was it in the nick of time. So I I am actually okay at engineering now. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so the two of you working together, that's awesome. Unless there's another task I need to work on. Yeah, yeah, nothing. This is all kind of driven by you guys at this point. So that all. Works. Oh no, sorry, that was a motion over to Ralph. Oh, okay, yeah. Haven't had had some ideas, so I want to double check. Indeed. Uh, so the first thing you'd want to do is assign, Z- uh, sorry, assign Shavor with the responsibility of uh, maintaining emergency supplies 
and coordinating with any of the queens that might be relevant. Rations, uh, batteries for lights if necessary. Uh, we haven't established how warm or cold it gets naturally on the planet. It's implied that the climate is kind of controlled by the caretaker. But mm -hmm. if the caretaker turns that off, I, out of character, have no idea what it is. So we definitely want to acquire the resources necessary to deal with that. All right. When, when and if it becomes uh, important. And part of that may be just people standing at a food replicator hitting repeat, repeat, repeat while exactly. they still have power. Yeah. Okay. Yes, exactly. But um, mm -hmm. he would leave that to Shavor to coordinate. Sure. And then he would want to work with Nikea um, to come up with an overall strategy for this. And also uh, contingency plans in the event that we're not able to take down the caretaker. You know, if they just need to move and leave, right? If they're not able to subvert the caretaker's influence and gain complete control over the immediate society, what if they need to just depart? What if we take them off the planet? What if we need to evacuate a lot of people? All of those, those, um, the things that we do in the worst case scenario. Okay. Yep. And then let's see, I think there's one last thing he would suggest. Uh, oh yes. Uh, he would suggest that because, you know, as, as the captain prefers resolving things through force of will, uh, if there is a way for the Queens to influence their personal servitors or any servitors with whom they have a positive relationship that could aid us greatly in any technical tasks, considering the servitors have an intimate understanding of the caretaker's technology. Um, and that's actually not a difficult task. The servitors are primarily programmed to be uh, nurturers and educators um, to raise and nurture uh, each generation of queens. That's sort of their base programming. And the caretaker can overwrite some of that, but that's still their fundamental purpose. So it's easy enough for the queens to reach into that. Um, and for any servitors that you guys haven't encountered yet, um, to uh, give them the same sort of crisis of faith that you know the ones you're familiar with have had. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so that would definitely, that would be no problem for that to happen as well. Oh, or, sorry. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, in in Chichalor's mind, uh, the servitors should be treated as people unless proven otherwise. So give them an opportunity to surrender when necessary. Uh, don't destroy them, subdue them with non-lethal uh, force if necessary, right? And also try and talk to them. Like, hey, yes, you you are also um, in the employ of the caretaker without being able to exercise agency over your own destiny. And if you really cared, and of course the queens would be delivering these specific words, if, if you really care for the future of these queens, you've known for so long right you would want to help them achieve what they desire okay. um so you're going to be working with nikea um as like a central coordination point absolutely okay. yes because um, the queens definitely have infrastructure and they're not you know they're definitely active participants in this whole process totally as you said makes sense um, to me yep. just so, would try and take a command yeah. position mm -hmm. so Yep, no problem. Um, that all works well. Um, let's work on, just because we have those people here, the communications side of things. <laughs> Real quick. First of all. Yep. Yes, I'm, I'm happy for you to handle that, but I also want to add one little note as well. The mm -hmm. captain would request that the yeoman accompany him. And so if there's any flavor you want to have where the yeoman is... <laughs> well, see, I would have um, figured you put the yeoman in charge of logistics oh. and supplies <laughs> yeah that makes sense yeah helping shavor um well the yeoman's coming along for logistics and supplies i just meant emergency stuff like emergency coordination would be shavor so yeah the yeoman needs to be involved and in, and in all of that so um actually there i have a cute little scene in mind here definitely so um your you have um our keck with you yep. for a period of time in the mm -hmm. presence wonderful perfect um and, uh, <laughs> you said Yoman Arkek is doing what Yoman Arkek does. Yes, uh, nine like, foot tall. Everything. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Arkek is not <laughs> talking to the queen. Arkek is talking um, to Chuchular. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, doing what Arkek does, pointing out what you're doing wrong and what you're yes, doing great. Today, <laughs> um, things that you're not thinking of, uh, things that you should be thinking of. Um, Wonderful. And that kind of stuff in the normal way that, that you guys do. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and after he departs, or they depart to uh, take care of a task, Nikia sort of comes up to you with a sly sort of smile. Your assistant has very strong opinions. Indeed. And I hardly think of them as my assistant. Technically, they are, well, according to the hierarchy in the Federation, uh, they have the rank of yeoman. However, in my crew, hmm, you know, he says, in, in, in my command, I operate according to uh, a very a very precious value and that is the chain of command depends on every link no one is less or more important everyone has a different role and as you observed I trust Yeoman Arkek to satisfy the role of providing useful dissent because when you are in our position of, of command and responsibility your decisions have outsized impact consequence of making a mistake will fall upon the shoulders of many other than you and in the past few years it's 272 other than me so i value their contribute what is that what is that just one year True? we're still oh, okay, just one, one year one year that's right one, one year, year sorry <laughs> <laughs> you'll feel much um, longer oh my god yeah right um he'd say they uh I value their contributions greatly, especially when they they draw attention to something I might have missed, even if in the context of our interactions, it might make me feel as though someone is initially being insubordinate. It's more important to me that I make the right choice than that my rank is respected. And through their dissent and your defense of your decisions, deepens your commitment to them. Where and they're the right choice, indeed. Um, and there's a small crowd of uh, folks working off in the corner and uh, Nikea sort of holds up a hand and says, Rhea. Um, and this uh, queen detaches herself from the group and comes over. Um, and there's definitely like a confrontational vibe as she comes over. <laughs> All right, cool, yeah. And the Nikia says, I'd like to introduce you to Captain Chuchalor. Um, and Rhea looks at you and says, um, like she's unfamiliar with the taste of these words, and she says, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Just because My she doesn't often friend. have direct interaction with candidates. Uh-huh. So this is a new experience. Like you've been brought into the command center of the entire Queen government, which is, I don't know, just to m- make sure you're aware of it, this is not, this doesn't happen. Mm, yeah. Um, but you're being brought in here as like an advisor to Nikea, is sort of how everyone seems to be thinking of you. Mm-hmm. You have um, a much more elevated position than they are used to. Mm. Uh, and Nikea looks for you and says, yeah. What is your job for me? And Rhea says, uh, it is my task to ensure that you know your own mind. And Nikea nods and says, and you do that very well. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> and Rhea's like, okay, and uh, turns and heads back over to what she was doing before. <laughs> I did want to bring up a little thing because when I was looking up the uh, the Tellarites to see if I could cause more trouble with Kitmule and, mm-hmm. and right, um, yeah. <clears throat> you do realize that like way back before the Federation was a thing, that the Tellarites and Andorians did not like each other at oh, all. Yeah. Oh yeah, not at mm-hmm. all. Yeah, that, that, that's part of why when when <laughs> when Craig mentioned. Mm-hmm. That Yeoman Narkek was Tellarite. I was like, okay, I know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Narkek's totally not going to expect this, and it's going to lead to a tighter bond. So. And it was awesome. It yep. was really good. Um, and just point of fact, like all of the races that 
were the founders of the Federation, except maybe the Donobulans, because just they kind of get along with everybody. But yeah. um, all of the founding races were at odds with each other. Till the humans um, it up. was the it was the the lubrication provided by the humans um, that sort of made all those pieces fit together into a, a more cohesive whole. Um, and another way to look at it is that everyone was so kind of mad at the humans coming in and just throwing the weight around that they all got it united behind it. But there's different ways to slice it. But that's a really interesting um, note from the background of the, the, the Federation and where it oh, all yeah. came from. Totally. Um, uh, one of the facts I just love about the whole story. Anyway, um, so that was my little scene. So we'll get on to the creation of the command structure. And actually, now that I look at it, we only have six minutes left we might just pause it here so this might be a good spot to wrap up actually um so the entire city pretty much especially around the the government district is like a kick down hill there's people running to and fro with purpose not in chaos right um to the untrained eye it might look like there's people running around but there's definitely purpose and um, motion like an anthill um, responding to um, an external threat um, on the small scale, it may look like craziness and random activity, but when you pan out and see, oh, there's actually structure and reason behind everything that's going on. Um, plans are being made, supplies are being um, assembled, uh, contingency plans are being drawn up. Um, fortifications, uh, should that need arise, uh, places where we can abandon that part of the city to consolidate resources in a tighter area, uh, for example. Um, so we don't, if heating becomes an issue or cooling becomes an issue, we don't have to try and heat the entire city. We can do it in like, uh, shelters, uh, for example, to consolidate, um, and minimize the resources required because resources are going to become scarce. Um, and as, um, the sun sets on that first day of the revolution, um, simultaneously across the city, all the lights go out. Oh, all the trains you. stop working. All the food replicators are offline. The water purification stops. Sewage stops being processed. Everything in the city that is run by the caretaker stops. And that's where the camera fades out. Somewhere in the darkness, Nirjad yells, Jeff S! <laughs> <laughs> Status report! <laughs> it's like we need to hack some food replicators. <laughs> yeah, or, the yeah. power going first. But yeah, everything controlled by the by the caretakers is taken offline, so let's take it out of the caretakers' control. Get the um, massage chairs working again first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's been a Priorities, long right? day. Yeah. Captain's like, "Where's my freaking hot tub?" <laughs> that's right. Hot tub, you um, sit and come up to your neck because it's for nine foot tall women. <laughs> you mean I stand? And it comes up to my neck. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, thank you to Roll20 and our patrons. We really appreciate your support. It helps us pay for art and uh, uh, replacing equipment and things like that. Plus it just sort of warms our hearts. People care about us and um, helps validate some of the work that we're doing here. Um, please join us on Discord at yeetinto.space. Um, it's a wonderful community. Um, no, what? no, carry on. The, the, there's just text on the screen. It's like oh, OK, message. sorry. Um, so yeah, join us on Discord, youtube.space.com, and you get some of the inside jokes and where some of the things are coming from that we're referencing on screen. Make your um, own inside jokes. Make your own inside jokes, exactly. Uh, With and sound. theories. Uh, there's this whole other thing going on. Talk about games you're playing or played. Um, find other people to play with. Uh, all that sort of stuff goes on there. Um, if you feel so inclined, we would welcome you to support us on Patreon um, at staylucky.club. Um, and uh, I guess that's it for us. Important note, if you are supporting us monetarily on patreon.com um, or staylucky.club, um, there is a post up right now. It runs for like a couple more weeks on when we're done with Star Trek. I've got one little one shot that I'm going to sneak in. And then you all can vote on um, uh, what the um, next game we're going to play, which is a poll between three choices. Geist the Sin Eater, Conan, Dreams of an... No. 
adventures in the age undreamed of. It's really, it's Conan. Uh, it's a quote from the movie. Yeah, right, it's an and, excellent title. Right, and Numenera. Um, so uh, yeah, come vote. It's kind of heavily weighted one way already, but hey. Um, and I, I believe we're going to be playing all three of those. We will those. play all it's three of them. The, you're just voting on the order that we play them in, basically. Correct. Yeah. It's, mm. Yeah. Um, and no, we're not telling you who's running them, but all three of them are being run by different people. Mm. So, I had a rumor Ash might actually run one sometime. Yeah, I, I heard a rumor <laughs> about it, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, what I started right here, right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so thank you uh, once again, everybody. Uh, I had a whole lot of fun. I hope you guys did too. Um, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Join us Bye. next time for more bold action.